so then I said, shut up, you stupid twat. And oh, my God. I know. Cause, and then I'm like, oh, fuck, what did I just do? But then the audience loved it. They went nuts. And she looked like an idiot. Like, they were all like, she is a stupid twat that should shut up. That's awesome. So it was like, felt really good. So that's on the record. So, like, yeah, so like, many more copies <laughs> yeah. called someone a stupid twat on it. <laughs> no, I was, <laughs> I was glad to have a record out finally. And that. Oh, it's so good. So good. And Rob Zombie's just... producing it. It's crazy. Wow. And then this book, that this stupid idea I had oh, about how were... guys are jerks, I went on Oprah with it. Oh, my God. Why did you I tell know. me? I would have loved to see that. Uh, I, I didn't know how it would go. I, I wanted to wait, you know? Do I you have it? it though. Yeah, yeah, can yeah. I come watch it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, my God. That's, that's so, so cool. cool. What's going on with you? Is it, what about that pilot? I got it. Awesome. I know. We're waiting to hear if it's going to get picked up, but it looks really good. Oh. They really like it. Awesome. Oh. So, so great. And Ducky was in it. Because oh, I brought him to the table read and they were they needed a dog for one scene and they're like, he's perfect. He is perfect. He is perfect. Yeah. Yes, he is. And then I sold that script to Comedy Central. Oh, the sports thing. Sports show of all things. Weird. I know, I don't even know anything about sports. but Loves. You know, good concept, I guess. What about, uh, what about you? What's been going on? We haven't seen you in a while. Um, so much. Wow, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a lot, so. You've been getting out a lot? I'm, um, actually, I wrote a show. Oh, wow, cool. <laughs> Are you just shopping it around, or? Um, no, I it's, it's help you doing it. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's even. gonna be, on it's a on show TV? no but it's actually it's a um it's like it's like a play slash movie cool like, wow. movie. like, like in a wow. theater like yeah yeah that sounds amazing wow. what's it what is it what's it what's it about are you like the star of it what is it it's about um the holocaust yeah, and and AIDS, kind of a, AIDS but it's Holocaust. funny, and it's also it's a um, musical. Oh my god, that sounds uh, awesome! I know. When it, when are you doing it's it? A real opus, you know. Um, you know what? Tonight, and it's actually tonight, so I better skedaddle. Um, right now? Yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff to do pre, uh, pre pro. Well, can we come see it? Yeah, I want to see it. Like, <sighs> shit, <laughs> it's sold out. It's, it's totally Sarah. sold out. Every seat. Oh, I know. What if, it sucks. What if we just uh, hang backstage and like walk from the wings or something? Yeah, can we just be backstage? Um, you know, just stand by the curtains, well. Be quiet. I can't <laughs> think why not. <laughs> um, so will you let us know? You know yeah, what? sure, definitely, definitely. Where, I'm where psyched. I'm totally psyched. Um, so I'll see you guys tonight. Awesome. Oh, see good luck. off like I got something going I wrote a show and it's playing tonight I'm so full of shit man what was I thinking I gotta write a show but how am I gonna do a show when I don't even have a show to write I never wrote a show but if I ever wrote a show I bet that all of them would know and think it fights you know what fuck them I could write a show Just do it. I'll write a show. All it takes is elbow grease, and I could write a show. I'll write a show tonight. I hope I do it right. 
I could take this mixed up world and put it in a show. I'll write a show, all right, and have it by tonight. All I need is a theater space and a bag of weed and a star. A star! Great! Good job, Sarah. I'm writing a whole show for tonight. I don't even have a star. Who's gonna be my star? She's gotta be pretty and she's gotta be smart. She's gotta be funny and she's gotta be hot. She's gotta have a perfect smile just like me. I just need a star, but who could it be? Julie Roberts? Mm, nah. Nicole Kidman? Are you kidding, man? Sandra Bullock? your mind. She ought to be better than those three twats combined. She's gotta have the thing that you just can't define. <gasps> me. It's me. I'm a comedian, that's what I do. How do we become whatever it is that we become? How, how is he a lawyer? How is she a hooker? How are we whatever it is we, we become? I think what it is, it's like, as we grow up from child, you know, in our childhood, we have all these dysfunctions and they kind of, they meld together and they form a formula, an individual formula that drives us to be whatever it is we're driven to be, you know, for comedians, it's definitely like any kind of humiliation, you know, I know for me, I was um, a bedwetter well into my teens and uh, continue to have um, a bevy of, you know, unwanted hairs and um, <laughs> I uh, was, I was raped by a doctor, which is, um, you know, so bittersweet for a Jewish girl. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for that. I knew something good would come out of that. Out of rape. I, um... I wear this uh, St. Christopher medal sometimes because my... I'm Jewish, but my boyfriend is Catholic, and it was just, it was cute the way he gave it to me. You know, he said, um, if it doesn't burn through my skin, it will protect me, which is, <laughs> who cares? Different religions, you know? I mean, I guess it, the only time it's an issue, I suppose, would be like, if you're having a baby, you gotta figure out like how you wanna raise your baby or whatever, you know, which wouldn't even still not be an issue for us because we'd be, honest, you know, and just say, you know, like, mommy is one of the chosen people, and, uh, and daddy believes that Jesus is magic. <laughs> That's not nice. No, Jesus is magic, he, you know, because he turned water to wine, and, um, he, um, I think he, he made the Statue of Liberty disappear in the 80s, <laughs> something. But you know, the Jews got all, you know, they didn't want, when that Jesus movie came out, you know, no, no the Jews didn't want people to see it because, you know, they felt, you know, everybody blames the Jews for, for killing Christ and then the Jews try to pass it off on the Romans. You know, I'm one of the few people that believes it was the blacks.
I don't care. Good. I, I hope the Jews did kill Christ. I'd do it again. I'd fucking do it again in a second. If I hear his Birkenstocks clacking this way. My boyfriend and I are at that like second or third stage, you know, where we're like, we're finally comfortable, you know, around it. Like I'm finally comfortable enough to pee in front of my boyfriend, which is so great, you know, cause now I'm gonna try it in the bathroom. And um, we take showers, we take showers together and you know, it's really, I guarantee if you take a shower with your boyfriend, by the time you step out of that shower, your breasts will be sparkling clean. <laughs> sparkling. I was licking jelly off of my boyfriend's penis and all of a sudden, all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm turning into my mother. You know, it's like, those clues, you know, that we're becoming our parents. It's scary. It's so scary. It's so scary. <laughs> Try to get that lilt like that. That's so fun. What a fun cut. It's so scary. It's scary. Can I steal you for a minute? Like that kind of voice. I slip into that. I don't know why. It's fun. Can I steal you from it? I'm on the birth control pill, um, cause I do a lot of fucking. <laughs> um, but I want like, I want to try something else because it's really hormony and um, I'm always looking, I'm always asking my friends what they use for birth control. I always take a little poll. Like I asked my friend Charlie what he and his wife use um, for birth control. And um, he said he just comes all over her face. So. <laughs> Um, we're gonna try that. And, uh, he has kids already, my boyfriend. He has kids. I mean, they're like they're they're. He's got a boy and a girl. They're nine and eleven, and they're great. He, you know what? He actually he he made them those ages to commemorate nine eleven, which I think <laughs> is amazing. You know, it says a lot more than a pin. You know. Um, I always think like I should get on it if I want to have kids. I just, you know, once you hit 30, you, you know, you've got to decide fat. You know, kids, it can be difficult to conceive. It can be dangerous. I mean, the best time to have a baby is when you're a black teenager. But, <clears throat> I'm not a, I'm not a like a hoity-toity kind of girl. I like I don't wear any jewelry. I'm not like um, I don't really. I'm not into jewelry or anything. I'm such a hypocrite. I there's a jewel that I think is. Ugh, I'm gonna sound like such a jap. There is one jewel that I think is stunning. That I it's just like a classic, and it's just and by jap I mean Japanese. <laughs> but it's um it's just gorgeous, you know, and it's really um it's rare. You know, it's only found like on the tip of the tailbone of Ethiopian babies. They, I, they debone the babies. I know that sounds so bad when you say it out loud, but it, no, if you saw it, so worth it, so worth it. You know, it's like, how do I even describe it? Like. Uh, like if a um, like if a diamond had that newborn baby smell, like, I want it. <laughs> but I uh, have a moral issue with it, obviously, because they're treating the unions um, that debone the babies really bad. And pick your battles, I guess. <laughs> so cute. I can't wait till Sunday. I'm gonna see my favorite niece and my other niece. And um, I shouldn't have favorites. I know I shouldn't, but I just, I can't help that she's crazy about me. And I just, I love that in people. And uh, I can make her laugh so easily. I've always been able to make her laugh. Like literally since she was a baby. 
I could make her laugh, which is so great. And you know what babies love? Um, uh, ethnic jokes. <laughs> she uh, came out of the closet recently, my niece, um, she announced to the family that she's a lesbian and she's seven. Did I mention that? And uh, I don't even know if she knows what a lesbian is, but I support her completely. And uh, I'll tell you what's heartbreaking. My sister punished her for it. <laughs> Can you believe that? No pussy for a week. <laughs> Which to us may not sound like, but when you're seven, you know, a week is a long time. You know, it's like, She goes to a school where the kids are not allowed to play tag on the playground. It's just, you know, and the reason that they give is that they say, you know, if, if a kid loses at tag, it could give him low self-esteem. And I know, you know, first of all, that's, it's fucking retarded, okay? And I'm sorry, I know I shouldn't say that. But, you know. And by retarded, I mean they can do anything, you know? <laughs> No, but it's, I think self-esteem is born out of things like, you know, I don't know, persevering past losing, you know, or getting, getting through a disappointment like that. You know, maybe we should be giving these kids a reason to win. We should be giving them motivation, you know, to, to win. I tell my niece every time she loses at tag, an angel gets AIDS, for instance. <laughs> You have to speak their language, you know what I mean? I tell her, you know, um, that a beautiful angel uh, gets full-blown AIDS. And, uh, and, and you know what? She wins. So think about that. And I tell her that when God gives you AIDS, and God does give you AIDS, by the way, I don't know. Make, make lemonades. Yeah. It's, it's called, it's positive spin, you know? I mean, it's, that's what we should steal from corporate America, you know? That's what we should steal, one positive thing we should take from the man, you know? Is, is positive spin, the whole idea of, of taking something terrible, something tragic and, and spinning it up into something uh, good. You know, if American Airlines were smart, their slogan would be, American Airlines, first through the towers. <laughs> because it is something in which they came first. Right? Right. Obviously, I'm not trying to belittle the events of September 11th. They were devastating, and they were beyond devastating. You know, and I don't want to say, especially for these people, or especially for these people, you know, but especially for me. Um, <laughs> because it was, it happened to be the same exact day that I found out um, that the soy chai latte was like 900 calories. <laughs> I had been drinking them every day. You know, because you hear soy, you know, you, you, you think healthy, and it's a lie. Um, but it was also the day we were attacked, and... <laughs> devastating. The, remember the rage, you know? And then there was no place to put it. Where do you put it? I'll tell you what I did. Domain names. Okay, I bought OsamaBinLaden.com, OsamaBinLaden.net, OsamaBinLaden.org. And then who's he got to come to? Big S. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's not for sale. <laughs> Looks like you're going to have to be Osama One. And then who's laughing last? America. America is. 
That was a tough year for me. I actually, it was the same year I, I sued my manager for sexual harassment, which uh, I don't know if you know anything about show business, but it's something that, boy, you know, for a struggling actress to sue her manager out here in Hollywood, it, it's something that uh, it takes a lot of guts to do, you know, um, especially because he didn't do anything. <laughs> <clears throat> we were in uh, Scotland for a trust camp. The whole agency went. Oh, oh Jesus! That's horrible. What, the what fuck happened? What is this, Carl? Is there a fire? What? What? Vohi water? I am fucking jam this up somebody's ass. <laughs> I mean, come on, Sarah. You asked for it. Yeah, yeah I asked you for it. You should Don't jam it up your own shit. ass, Carl. What you ask me for? Fiji water! I, I only drink Fiji water! Did you ask for Fiji water? Cause I'll... Okay, now I'm mad. <laughs> now you got me mad. I don't I will drink call... this water. It tastes thick. Listen to me. I will break down walls for you, okay? I will, I will go into Mike Eisner's office and I will personally, you know, I'll masturbate him into a cup for you. Is that what you want? Is it? What do you want me to do? It's you want me to go liposuction uh, Harvey Weinstein and give you some of his fat? What is it you dream of? I want to be a part of the Sarah Silverman dream. I want you to take your dreams and I want you to use me as a tool and I want you to carve your dreams out of wood. Real wood. And then I want you to dip them in shellac so they never change. Never change. What did uh, the agency send you for the show? I told them to send you a gift. The cheese and sausage platter. Cheese and sausage? I'm going to take this. I have an early morning meeting. Best part of the strawberry? Best part. Are you You're ready to do the show? No, I'm not ready to do the show because I can't even lubricate my goddamn throat. You well, I'm gonna, call, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call Vohee Water and I'm gonna get mad at him myself. Let me get the phone number. I wish I had my cell on me. You know what, you know what, Carl? I'll forget it, all right? You just have my fucking understudy do it. You up for a show? Get out there and knock them dead, all right? Diva alert. <laughs> um, this is so gay. I just promised myself that, um, <laughs> I'm just gonna totally stop the show for a second, but I just promised myself that I would um, dedicate this performance to my Nana who, um, although this may not be her cup of tea specifically, but she um, was very supportive of me. And we were very close. And she passed away a year ago tonight. So this is for you, Nana. <laughs> um, wait, I'm sorry. She was 96, so obviously I suspect foul play. And <laughs> I, uh, I am spending my own money and I am getting her body exhumed. <laughs> and I am going to get a full rape exam performed. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm gonna get to the bottom, to the bottom of this. And my parents are not behind me. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> they never are. They don't believe in me. So they're wrong this time. That sucks for them. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Oh, God, please let them find semen in my dead grandmother's vagina. <laughs> My shit, and I'm sorry. And that belongs <laughs> off stage. Can you blow your own nose? Can you tie your own shoe? If you had Velcro ones, would you even know what to do? When you make a duty, is it in your pants or trousers as they sud in the day? your grandson is gay is it a bummer that your pubes are all gray when you clear your throat is it really disgusting does it go on for hours and miles you're gonna die soon you're gonna die soon it's not cold in here you're just dying you're gonna die soon you're gonna die soon you in the back you are dying crazy how you chew your walnuts! You told me you hated my perm! I visited you! Pick up your prescription! I'm not your candy man, vagabond! You're gonna die soon! You're gonna die! You're dying! I'm just, uh, sensitive. And, uh, I, my, my skin is paper thin. And uh, people don't realize it because I'm sassy and I'm brassy, and, uh, but I am. I just, you know, I, I see these care commercials with, with, you know, these little kids with the giant bellies and the flies. And these are t one and two year old babies, you know, nine months pregnant. And <laughs> it, it breaks my heart in two. It breaks my heart in half, you know? And I don't give money because I don't want them to spend it on drugs. But I give, you know, I, I give it, give, you know? I mean, I, I this past summer sent uh, 15 really fun cowl neck sweaters to this village in Africa and in, in really fun colors. <laughs> Expecting nothing, by the way. And um, they culled their money together, or whatever they call it, and bought a stamp and sent me a postcard thanking me. And it said, you know, thank you, and that they had enough sweaters for every single member of the village to get one, and that they were delicious. <laughs> um. I'm working on an open letter and it goes like this. Guess what, Martin Luther King? I had a fucking dream too. I had a dream that I was in my living room. It wasn't my living room, but it was like playing my living room in the dream. And I walk through to the backyard, and there's a pool. And as I'm diving in, there's a shark coming up from the water with braces. <laughs> so maybe you're not so fucking special. <laughs> Martin Loser King. <laughs> yeah. 
I want to be the first comic ever to shit on Martin Luther King. <laughs> people only talk about the good things. They don't mention he was a litter bug. He would lock, he'd roll up all the windows and lock them and fart in the car with the heat up. while his family suffered <laughs> and he would laugh. <laughs> I just think people should know everything <laughs> before they give someone a day. <laughs> I'm a comic with something to say. And I think that that's the difference. <laughs> Learn, Madi. That's what I call it. <laughs> when I was, um, when I was little, I saw my father's penis by accident and I just, I wasn't scarred by it. I don't think it really affected me just because I was so young, you know, and so drunk. But <laughs> I did, um, this is fucked up. When I was in high school, I went out with my father's best friend. And that's embarrassing, you know, my father uh, having a 14-year-old best friend. <laughs> it's like the way you treat your kids, uh, you know, the way you raise them, it informs everything they become, you know, all their hang-ups or, you know, whatever they have. You know, I, was, I went to get some water. I went to a liquor store down the street to get some water. Some delicious Fiji water, actually, which for some reason just tastes better. <laughs> and as I'm walking in, there's a, there's a man standing outside the door, loitering outside the door. And as I walk by, he goes, I want pussy. <laughs> and um, first of all, I'm not conceited or anything. I just, but he, you know, um, you know, he was talking to me. <laughs> he definitely want, was talking to me, and he's like, I want pussy. I think it was more like, I want pussy! Or something like that. I don't know, I can't do those accents, but... Um, the point is, I had every reason to be offended, to be angry, you know, or, or whatever, but I, I, I felt sorry for him, you know? I just, I, I just, it made me sad, because it was so obvious to me, you know, that this is a person who grew up, who, who was a, a child, you know, whose mother and father probably never gave him any pussy, you know? <laughs> and you've got to think before you judge people, you know, is the point, because it's, it's a cycle, you know? Um, I don't have a joke to end that part, but anyway. <laughs> The point I'm trying to say is that kids need role models, you know. They, ne they need adults in their lives that they can mold their own lives after. Otherwise, they're going to grow up and they're going to be fucked up. You know, look at strippers. <laughs> right? Strippers should be role models for little girls. <laughs> if only for the fact that they wax their assholes, you know, I mean... <laughs> I don't have the guts. And I don't think a lot of you do either. You excluded, sir. Um, they deserve the purple heart for that, the purple asshole. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, the, I've never, I mean, the closest I've ever come to waxing my asshole is um, once I got it washed and styled. But, um... <laughs> they say, you know, strippers, you know, they, they end up being in porn and, you know, it's like a gateway job to porn and, um, I don't know, what are you going to do? I'd never do it and I, I could if I wanted to, I've been approached. Um, or if I did, it would be purely, you know, for political reasons because I, you know, do not think there are enough Jewish women represented in porn. Fuck my tuchus. Fuck my tuchus. Hmm. I'm a bad Jew. I'm a dirty Jew. Fucking dirty Jew. Fuck my fucking dogs. <laughs> we 
have fun. Can I steal you? People think Jewish women aren't sexy. That's such bullshit, you know? Put on a sexy negligee. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. That's my, um, that's probably one of my best features out of many good features, but it's, I have a very, I have a swan-like, swan-like neck. And my neck is actually six inches long, completely flaccid. And, um, I'm cheating. I'm measuring from the base of my balls. I was watching, um, porn. And it was like a series of vignettes. And in this one scene, it featured Ron Jeremy, very famous um, pornographic thespian. And he, in this scene, he's masturbating onto a lady. And, um, but I noticed that he, um, his pinky was out and found out um, why I found out why he does that. I found out why he um, masturbates with his pinky out. Um, it's because he's classy. <laughs> I'd like to sing a song, um, if I may, with your permission. This is a song dedicated to all the porn actors and porn actresses out there. I know that our guitarist, Dave, uh, did porn for a while, gay porn. And uh, ladies, it was work, it was a job. It was, trust me, but... Um, I, I was a gaffer. I, yeah, you got gaffered all over your face. <laughs> but seriously, let's take it down a second. Jennifer, can we take it down, get some mood lighting here? Wow, sexy, sexy lighting. This is a song. Is there anything on me at all? <laughs> you give yourself to all of us Sharing all your nakedness A temporary It's you. There's a hole in your butt where the duty comes out. There's a hole in your butt where the penis goes in. Your vagina has so many penises in it that you might as well talk about the times there are none in it. Cause no other times that are more unique. Do you ever take drugs so that you without crying Won't you? 
Thank you. Thank you to the Silver Men. You know who has a uh, tiny vagina? Um, a Barbie. Yeah. Not Klaus Barbie, the infamous Nazi. Okay. No. Nazis are a-holes, and I'll be the first one to say it, because I'm edgy. <laughs> Nazis are motherfucking asshole wipes. Dicks. <laughs> oh, they're cute when they're little. I will get them that. <laughs> they're so cute. Why can't they stay small? <laughs> but... I, uh... I always know when it's Hitler's birthday. Because uh, they announce it on Entertainment Tonight, you know. Right before they go to commercial, you see like a silhouette. And then they say, you know, this man is responsible for the deaths of six million Jews. Is it Ted Danson? <laughs> Patrick Duffy? <laughs> my niece is, uh, my lesbian niece, their whole family is very Jewy, and she goes to Hebrew school and and loves it. And um, she called me up and she's like, um, you know, Aunt Sarah, did you know that Hitler killed 60 million Jews? And I corrected her and I said, you know, I think, um, I think he's responsible for, for killing six million Jews. And she said, oh yeah, six million, I knew that. But seriously, I mean, what's the difference? <laughs> uh, the difference is 60 million is unforgivable young lady <laughs> but kids you know <laughs> try to figure them out you can't they're kids um, my nana was a survivor of the holocaust or i'm sorry alleged holocaust and she uh <laughs> She had the tattoo, you know, the, the number, and thank God she was at one of the better concentration camps. She had a, a vanity number. It said, um, be dazzled, which is kind of fun. You know what I don't understand are the, um, the um, Jewish people driving, who drive German cars. And, you know, it's just, it doesn't, it's so, it's not a secret that companies like Mercedes and BMW and, you know, Hitler commissioned the Volkswagen. I mean, these are companies that built cars for the Nazi war effort, you know, and yet Jewish people who drive German cars, it's just, it's so gay. And uh, <laughs> it's just gay. And then on the other side of the thing, there's, you know, there's Mercedes, you know, companies like that who, boy, you know, if they could have only had the foresight if they only could have seen into the future at the kind of business, you know, at, at the, the amount of money they'd be making from Jewish consumers, you know, they'd, I don't know, maybe they'd help not kill the Jews, but, uh, you know, instead, they helped, uh, you know, facilitate a genocide of a people who would ultimately become their best customers, you know. <laughs> Any Jew will tell you it's just bad business, you know? <laughs> and now I feel preachy, but I just, I really believe this to, to be true. Um, I believe that if black people were in Germany during World War II, that the Holocaust would have never happened. I do, you know, or not to Jews. <laughs> uh, but, um... <laughs> I got in trouble for saying the word chink on a, on a um, talk show, on a network talk show, and um, it was in the context of a joke, you know, obviously. That would be weird. That would be like a really bad career choice if it wasn't. Um, but nevertheless, the president of an Asian American watchdog group out here in Los Angeles, his name is Guy Aoki, and he was up in arms about it, and he put my name in all the papers calling me a racist, and it hurt. You know, I mean, as, as a Jew, you know, as a member of the Jewish community, you know, I was really concerned, you know, that we were losing control of the media. And, <laughs> right? I mean, like, 
what kind of world do we live in where a totally cute uh, white girl can't say chink on network television? <laughs> it's like the 50s. It's scary. There are only two Asian people that I know that I have any problem with at all. Um, one is uh, Guy Aoki. <laughs> and the other is my friend Steve, who actually went pee pee in my coke. And uh, <laughs> he's all, me Chinese, me play joke. You know, like, uh, if you have to explain it, Steve, it's not funny. And you have to break it down. Yeah. You have to be able to laugh at yourself. So that's what I tell Asian people all the time. And like, they don't listen. Yeah. Midgets. You know the politically correct. The politically correct word for midget is little person, which just tickles me because you know it's like. The only politically correct word that's actually more insulting than the original <laughs> one. <laughs> Midgets don't like being called little people. <laughs> you know, they much prefer, yes, you are. <laughs> I'm ba 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 ba. <laughs> I'm a boo boo boo. Thank you for laughing at that. I appreciate it. I appreciate the laugh. I always feel crappy when I do that joke, but it gets such a good laugh. <laughs> I just feel like, what did midgets ever do, you know, as a people to deserve to be mocked? You know, they're human beings born extra crazy small. And, you know, <laughs> I don't think. I don't think like anybody here thinks we should make fun of midgets, you know, but, and, but we do anyway. You know. I think it's because, I think it's because, you know, I'll tell you why we make fun of midgets. We're not afraid of them. That's what it always boils down to, across the board, you know? I mean, I had a joke with the word nigger in it that I thought was so edgy, you know, and so hip. And I was doing it all over, all over town, you know, at comedy clubs, and I was at this one club doing my show. And I look in the front row, and the whole front table is black people, and, or, um, or Af African-American people. And um, you know what? It was half and half, I'm pretty sure. And, um, <laughs> but the point is, I, I, I didn't do the joke, you know? And then you gotta ask yourself, is that a, an edgy joke or is that a racist joke? You know, and I, I didn't do it because I was afraid of them, you know? <laughs> I didn't. And I ended up changing that joke to chinks. <laughs> so you live and you learn and you, you hopefully you grow, you know? I, um... I was going on, I was about to go on a talk show and, uh, and talk about that whole kind of idea, how we make fun of people that we're not afraid of, you know, but we, we refrain from making fun of people we, that scare us, you know, and uh, I was about to go on and the segment producer came over to me and he said, you know, um, instead of nigger, say the N-word. And I said, um, great, you know, what do you want me to say for chink? And he said, say chink. <laughs> Why? I'd like to sing a song for you now. And, uh... <laughs> Great, it's twisted. <clears throat> yeah. A love song. Oh, shit. I did that in rehearsal too, I forgot, and the guy in the, one of the guys working in the back said, plug it in, and I was like, yeah, we'll all fucking rip it up. <laughs> oh, plug it in. <clears throat> one, two, three, four. I love you more than bears love honey. I love you more than Jews love money. I love you more than Asians are good at math. I love you even 
if it's not hip. I love you more than black people don't tip. I love you more than Puerto Ricans need bats. I love you more than girls love dolls. I love you more than dogs love balls. I love you more than the white stuff in a zit. I love you like Gary Busey. I love you more than Dykes love Lucy. I love you more than my after show monster bong hit. Jewish people driving German cars. Jewish people driving German cars. Jewy people buying German cars. What the cock is that shit? But maybe it's like, take back the night. Maybe it's like how bleeding hearts grow old and swing to the right. Maybe it's like when a faggot calls himself a faggot. Jewish people driving German cars. It's the opposite of FUBU. But maybe it's Patty Hearst siding with her kidnappers. Maybe it's South African miner killing diamond wearing gangster rappers. Maybe it's like when black guys call each other niggers. Lynch, who opened for me tonight, um, we got drunk and, uh, or he got drunk, I don't drink, but I think I, something happened. And I dared him to, um, to dip his balls into his drink for a dollar, for a second, and would not do it. I just thought it'd be funny if he, like, I don't know, like, plied them in. And, <laughs> um, he wouldn't do it, and I just think it's interesting. Like, I know exactly why he wouldn't do it. And this is interesting. He wouldn't do it because he knew if he put them in his drink and they floated, right, we would know that his balls were a witch. And I just <laughs> love that, you know? I love, like, getting into the psychology of people. I didn't, I did not lose my virginity until I was 26, and that's true, um, 19 vaginally, but, um, <laughs> but 26, you know, what my boyfriend calls the real way, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what, that's a fucking disgusting joke, and I don't do that, that's a fictional, that's a joke, I mean, I don't, that's fucking nasty, and I don't, my asshole is, it's totally for decoration. It's like an appendix, it's like an appendix. I tell people that I was shot. I, um, <laughs> and my friend, my friend Mike was, you know, he was like, um, last night, oh, I, you know, it's not disgusting, it's natural, you know? He's like trying to sell me on it being natural. I'm like, um, first of all, duty comes out of there, okay? And second of all, fucking duty comes out of there. I don't need two reasons when duty, when duty's involved. <laughs> I'm like going off and then remember as I'm talking that, you know, Mike is gay and I now have to backpedal and say like, no, your asshole is like your vagina. That's totally cool. 
thank God. I can think on my feet, because I'm a comedian. But, um... And he took me to the Gay Pride March this year, and it was a blast. I've been there before, and it's, it's so fun, and it's just crazy. And I, but, you know, I just don't want... Like, I don't want to be labeled as straight or labeled as gay, you know? I just want people to, to look at me and, and see me, you know, as white. And... <laughs> You know, that sounds... I can say that, by the way, because I used to go out with a guy who was half black who totally broke up with me because I'm a fucking loser. And, um... I just heard myself say that. It's so, I'm such a pessimist. I have the worst attitude. He's half white. And he totally <laughs> broke up with me. And it's funny now, like... Like... What is it? Hindsight's twenty twenty or whatever. Like, I know, it's so obvious to me now why he broke up with me, you know? Because he has fucking low self-esteem, you know? And I can't compete with that. Like, everybody knows somebody who, it's like anything you say to them, they're going to take it. They're going to hear it in the most negative way. You know what I mean? And he was like, you could give him a com Like, I gave him a compliment, all right? I told him he probably would have made, like, a really expensive slave. <laughs> In the, like in the olden timey days, not now. And um, what does he do, right? It goes through the uh, Rube Goldberg, you know, crazy straw of his low self-esteem. And it hit his ear and he heard something fucked up, you know? I can't control that. Like, I can't control what he hears, you know? He has to learn how to love himself, you know, before I can stop hating his people, you know? <laughs> As a people. I don't care if you think I'm racist. I just want you to think I'm thin. This is, you know what, I do talk a little bit about race and the important thing, it's like the, like if I, God, if I based my material on stereotypes, that would be messed up, it would, but I don't, okay? I base it on facts. <laughs> Fact, the, um, the SAT test, the test that basically decides whether you go to college or not, is culturally biased towards Caucasians. That's a fact. Okay? I heard that somewhere. <laughs> fact. In the year 2004, women still get paid 70 cents to every dollar a man gets paid, and that's a fact. Okay? Fact. Every 30 seconds in this country, a person of color jumps up and down and waves their arms behind a local news reporter. <laughs> I went out with a Mexican man. Do racist people go out with Mexican men? I don't think so. <laughs> They're filthy, but... <laughs> it's like, it's so hard, like, I feel bad, like, it's, it's jokes, you know? Like, this woman came up to me last night, and she was, um, she was Mexican, and she was just, she was so irate, you know? She was so angry, and she came up to me, and she said, you know, I'm Mexican, and I don't stink. And it just broke my heart, like, I felt... Like, I had to explain to her that, like, you can't smell yourself. <laughs> Thanks a lot.
Thank you so much, and we would love to, and I mean the royal way, um, leave you with a, a song, something inspirational to, to leave with. Amazing Grace. <laughs> Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace that fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. All new material. Mm. And rape and AIDS and Holocaust, just, just like, like you said. said. <laughs> it was really so cool. Well, you must be so proud of yourself. It is I so am. great. Wow, look at this. It's so pretty. Mm. It's beautiful. Wow. Oh my God, it looks so good. Do you guys want something? Um, I'm so hungry, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm starving. Dying. This is like my dinner. Oh, um, uh, yeah. That's... Oh, I've got some Vohi water. Delicious. If you want, um, actually, it's just the last one, so oh. just you can split it. When do you drink a whole water? <laughs> you know? I don't know. Right, totally, you always leave it. You always leave it. Yeah. Are you doing something? No, I'm good. Oh. Open? It's, oh, this one's open. Well, thanks for coming by. And uh, I, I'm i sorry, I just need kind of some, like, me alone. Oh, God, oh yeah, yeah, totally, you just got, of course. Yeah. Well, we'll just... You know what we'll call you? Like now. And like, yeah. Um, okay. No, it's okay. Um, go well, get a drink job. or? No? Yes, huh? We're, we're gonna go get a drink and. Oh, have a good time. All right. It was awesome. Oh, I know. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Mm. Did it, kid? Come over here. I got a secret for you. You're fucking amazing. <sighs> You're a star. I'm a star fucker. 
I didn't get any sleep. I went to sleep at one in the morning and I woke up at three in the morning because I was just excited. I made myself stay in bed, but I was like this in bed. But what are you gonna do? Maybe I'll take a nap. You know. When I'm dead, right? Fuck yeah. What is that noise? Oh, the child laughing. It's really hard, you guys. Seriously, don't go into acting because it's totally like harder work than you think. Oh, you know what? It's just like I just, it helps me realize I'm alive. Going out with a guy who drives a German car. I'm not looking for a yang to my yang. I'm looking for a yang to my yang. He hates women too, and I love it. So fuck you. A bird shit on me the day before yesterday. Do you feel lucky? I felt lucky. I, yeah, I was like, ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if birds ate eggs and they were like, oh my god, I can't believe this came out of my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Laura Silverman. I'm actually Sarah's sister. In real and, life. In real life. And I'm playing her friend, which I am not in real life. I'm Brian Posehn, her friend, and I'm actually playing her sister. Hey, guys. Oh, hey, we're Hi doing Sarah. a little oh, featurette I don't interrupt. <laughs> behind the scenes thing. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Have fun. Thanks for just no, no, stuff. Yeah, we're, we're just doing jokey stuff. Oh, awesome. So how is it working with Sarah? Oh, it's horrible. Great. It's, if you're really, really into Sarah, it's great because she's into Sarah. Yeah. So you have a common interest. Three of the actors just died from that. I'm one year and one month pregnant. I'm 13 months pregnant, I just found out. That's what Steve calls his wife, the Kuntinsky. I'm not married. Whatever. Fuck you. Motherfucker. All right, y'all good there? Motherfucker. OK, guys. Came in here to have gas. Like a Marlo Thomas that just walked in on her father under a coffee table with a girl taking a shit on it. What's, what's funny? I would love to know what's funny. You guys better go. But thanks a lot. <laughs>